authenticity is your superpower. No one on God's green earth sees things exactly like you do. Your experiences, right? The way your mind works is different from every single person sitting next to you right now. Embrace it. That's where your power comes from, right? That's what makes you stand out from the crowd. Check, check. Hello. How y'all feeling? Are y'all still here? Are we still good? We're still feeling like energetic, yeah? Okay. I gotta say, the DJ in me is shocked that I am here this early on a stage right now speaking to human beings. Um, normally, it's me and my dog cuddling up, recovering from the night before, and just like binge eating bagels and mainlining coffee. So, a round of applause for me being here right now. I just wanna throw that out there. Okay. Now, with that out of the way, all of those accolades that are mentioned, right? Incredible stuff and, and things that I've dreamed about. But at the end of the day, my greatest success and the thing that I'm the most proud about is the fact that each and every day, I get to make a living doing something that I love while speaking my truth. That's more important than anything else, any monetary success, any, any sort of proximity to celebrity that so many people are chasing. I get to show up every damn day as myself and put food on the table doing it, right? And thank you. And a part of being myself and walking in my purpose, my vision, it's become wanting to be an inspiration for my community, right? Above all else, I feel like I've been put on this earth to inspire Latinos around the country. And much of my content has centered around speaking to American-born Latinos, right? Many of us who exist in this sort of gray area of too much this for some people while also being not enough that for others, right? I can remember going to visit family in Puerto Rico and they would clown me because, I'll be honest, y'all, my Spanish, it's trash. It's, it's just trash. I, I'm working on it, I promise, but it's not the best, okay? And then the irony of that, you would go home I'd be amongst, you know, my, my white friends, and they would clown me for the fact that my house smelled a little different because my mom, you know, she was cooking with some sofrito, right? Because God forbid anybody seasoned chicken, right? That's just the craziest idea, right? So this kind of just always left me feeling in this middle place and not knowing where the hell I existed, right? And as a result, it created a person that spent a lot of his life just trying to fit in, Right? not wanting to make too much noise, wanting to say the right thing so these people would respect me and accept me as a part of their own, right? And it's not until very recently that I've realized the power in this otherness, right? That embracing it changed the course of my entire life and has made all of my dreams come true, right? And a part of, of, of this otherness and getting to the place of embracing it was flipping the switch in my mind, right? No longer trying to be everything for everyone, but instead being exactly who I am and being okay with that. And it's two key things that I think I've adapted, right? Obviously there's like a million and one little steps along the way that have gotten me here to, to being the human being speaking in front of you today. But the two key things that I would attribute to that, the first being, and I think we're all kind of, we're sharing a similar brain I feel like over here. The first being authenticity is your superpower, right? No one on God's green earth sees things exactly like you do. Your experiences, right? The way your mind works is different from every single person sitting next to you right now. Embrace it. That's where your power comes from, right? That's what makes you stand out from the crowd. And the second key that I've learned on my, my journey of, of really finding myself is if you don't see it, create it. If you don't see it, create it. Oftentimes we waste our lives trying to fit a, a square peg into a round hole, right? Only to watch as somebody else changes the course of other people's lives because they were bold enough to go out there and create the very thing we were hoping for, right? It's up to us to be unafraid to disrupt the norms and create the very thing that we've been starving for. So the first thing I wanna focus on is the idea of Authenticity, right? Again, something that I've struggled with for a very long time. Being comfortable in my own skin, 
being comfortable in my Latinness, whatever the hell that means, right? And a part of that came from my relationship or lack thereof with my own community, right? I can remember going back to Puerto Rico, spending the summers there. And at this point, I'm a teenager. I'm old enough to kind of start going out to some of the bars and clubs. And I'm going to go hang out with my aunt, who's only a couple years older than me. And that's a whole other story, right? Uh, <laughs> Grandpa was a Rolling Stone. Anyway, um, so I'm out there hanging out with my fellow teenage aunt, right? And uh, we're, going, we're going to meet a, a bunch of her friends, right? And we walk in, and we enter the nightclub through the smoky bar. And we're looking for her friends. I just see, like, a hand pop up. Somebody's waving to her. And emerges just this angel, right? This angel of a woman standing right there. And it's my lucky day because she's friends with my aunt, right? So, of course, I'm like, I'm already thinking, like, this is it. I'm, I'm good. I've hit the lottery. I'm coming in there with my New York swag, right? Like, she's going to fall in love with me. This is it. Get the wedding bells ready. We're going to do it. Let's just go. In Viejo San Juan, we're going to just have that wedding right there, okay? So, I go up to my aunt. I'm like, listen, you know, like, put in a good word and introduce me. You know, let me, let me see what's up with her. So my aunt brings her over, and she goes, this is my, my nephew. <laughs> my nephew, he's from the States. And this beautiful angel just speaks these words to me, a sentence that I will never forget for the rest of my life. She says, oh, so you're a gringo. Shot to the heart right there, okay? That's it. I'm done. I think I, I like, tried to respond in some broken Spanish. Obviously, it did not go well for me. Um, <laughs> and it's, it's at that moment, though, I really was like, fuck. Sorry for my language, but fuck. Where do I fit in? Because the very people that are supposed to be my people are making a very clear distinction. You are not one of us. You are lesser than us, right? And this sort of set me off on a journey that I think I, I really began to sort of detach from my own culture a bit, right? I still have the love for Puerto Rico. My father is like the mayor of proud Puerto Ricans, you know, he, he, he is just that guy. But as far as a real connection to my people goes, I didn't have that at that point, right? And I love the Joseph Campbell quote that you, you brought up. One of my favorite people who also had a uh, very big change in my life. That's another talk. But you talk about the two days that are important, right? The day you're born and the day you really find yourself, right? For me, I found myself and had an awakening while sitting inside of a radio studio by myself at like 3 in the morning. And I was watching the news on TV. And they were covering Hurricane Maria and the destruction that it had on Puerto Rico. And something about that moment, it, it just came over me. I lost it. I was crying in the studio by myself and just feeling helpless in that moment, but at the same time, feeling so connected to those people that I was seeing. Places that I went to as a kid, destroyed. The numbers, the death totals, no matter what our government told us, the real numbers, just an atrocity. And then seeing the people being interviewed, and, and they're just raw emotion from their entire lives as they know it being uprooted. And it was in that moment that it was like, this is it. I have to do something. I can't be a bystander anymore. I can't wait for them to extend the hand, right? I have to insert myself into what's going on. I have to be a part of that culture, that community. Even if they don't understand me off the get, I know that they're going to accept my heart and what I put out there, right? So I, you know, am at the time working for the breakfast club. The hosts come in, and I'm really making a push like, listen, this is a big deal. A lot of people are going through it. We have to cover this. And to their credit, they did, right? But that wasn't enough for me because they didn't cover it in the way I wanted. And how could they? They didn't have that same personal attachment to it, right? And that set me off on this journey where I now have this awakening. This is who I am. This is what my purpose is. Now it gets to the point of, if you don't see it, create it. Because I got tired of trying to convince other people that our stories were important. And I went off on this journey of 
every single thing that I did from then on was related to my community and being a voice for my community. And you know what the, the irony is? The second I began to be more vulnerable and honest about the fact that I was always feeling like an outsider in my own community and expressing things that are not normal in our community, like mental health, the more the doors started to open for me, the more the things that I had been dreaming about began to just pour in. And one of those things was the opportunity to be one of the founding creators for iHeartMedia's first ever Latin podcast network. And just through hard work and the content that I was creating, inevitably got in front of the heads of that network, right? As they're getting ready to launch. And we're having great discussions. We're having talks about my background and, and you know, everybody's talking about all the things that I've been doing kind of on social media. And it becomes clear, it's like, listen, we wanna move forward with having you be a part of this. What do you wanna call your podcast? And let me tell you, that, that angel that I now view as a devil came up in my mind. Okay, and in my authentic self, I said, this podcast is going to be called Life as a Gringo. Thank you. Because I recognize that if I'm feeling this way, there's so many other people who have to be feeling that way as well. And the numbers showed that, right? I inevitably, because I was in my authenticity, because I dared to create what I wanted to see, I started speaking to a sector of our community that has felt ignored for incredibly, man, forever, right? Let's be honest. Because we talk a lot about the future. A lot of people have been talking about the future here. And when we create this caste system that you don't fit into a particular box, what do we expect the future to think of their own culture, their own community? Because you don't speak perfect Spanish, you're not one of us? I don't think so. They still visually are going to be looked at the same way by anybody who wants to do harm to, to one of us, right? They're going to go through the same struggles. They've been through the same upbringing as any one of us have gone through. They're a part of this community. And we need to learn how to embrace each other even for our differences, right? So to kind of close things out here, we talk about authenticity as your superpower, right? Again. I had mine, if anybody's seen the movie Eight Mile, Life as a Gringo was my eight mile moment where all the stuff they were gonna use on me, the ammo they had against me, I turned into the thing that I was gonna fight back with, right? And it's led to me living the blessed dream life that I get to do right now. And if you don't see it, create it, right? The idea that innovation and progress first starts with disruption Someone has to dare to go against the norm in order for us to see the change that we are all searching for, right? And each and every one of you didn't show up on a Saturday morning to just sit here blindly and not take anything from it, right? We're all here making an effort. And our community is relying on each and every one of us to take a risk and be the change that we want to see. Thank you.